You know, the first time I heard that song, the repetitionness of it. Father, with holy nothing, with holy nothing, did you say it bothered you? Yes. Yeah. I, and then I got to thinking about it. <laughs> Sometimes my life is like a woman's purse or a man's glove box. It's never ending. You keep going through it and you find something. <laughs> you got the kitchen sink. She does have a kitchen sink of hers. There's always something in there that we didn't know. There's always something. Okay, Dad. I'll give you this. Okay, Dad. I'll give you this. And sometimes it's just the day. Today at our household has been extremely chaotic. Mm -hmm. We uh, kind of teetered be literally between life and death at a moment. We had a little emergency, but you know, God, I had to withholding nothing. Withholding. All right. Withholding nothing. So sometimes. Dig a little deeper in your purse or your glove box. So, in the last couple of weeks, Bill and I have been praying, working as a team for tonight. And I kept telling him, I said, I keep going to Deuteronomy 16. And he's got it up in King James here. It says, 3, 16, 16. Three times a year, all your males shall appear before the Lord your God at the place he chooses. At the Feast of Unleavened Bread, at the Feast of Weeks, at the Feast of Tabernacles. And they, not, they shall not appear before the Lord empty-handed. Every man shall give as he is able, according to the blessing of the Lord your God, which he has given you. Withholding nothing. Amen. Off of that, as I was studying, the Psalms of Ascents. A S C E N T S. I have problems with my S S S S. They, there's 15 of them. We're not going to read them all. Don't panic. <laughs> <laughs> but they say it was one of two. That they, the Israelites would say, we're coming back in the days of Israel, back from the captivity. They repeated these psalms. They also say as they were, there's 15 steps up to the temple. 15, they say the psalm of ascent, climbing up. It's the going to the Lord. So we're going to start in Psalms 121, and I'll move so you can see. Whoop, and I'll move so you can see. Yeah. We're holding nothing. We're holding nothing. I will lift up my eyes to the hills from whence comes my help. My help comes from the Lord who made heaven and earth. He, he will, will not allow your my foot, my foot, my foot, my foot, my foot to be moved. He who he keeps me will not slumber. slumber. Behold, he, he who keeps Israel shall be the slumber of sleep. The Lord is my keeper. The Lord is my shade at my right hand. The sun shall not strike me by day, nor the moon by night. The Lord Christ shall preserve, preserve me from, from evil. evil. He shall preserve my soul. The Lord Christ shall preserve my, my going out and my, and my coming in from this time forward 
for even more. Psalms 123. Unto you do I lift my eyes, so you who dwell in the heavens, behold as the eyes of servants look to the hand of their master, as the eyes of a maid to the hand of her mistress. So my eyes look to the Lord my God, until he has mercy on me. Have mercy on me, O Lord, have mercy on me, for I am exceedingly filled with contempt. My soul is exceedingly filled with the scorn, with the scorn of, of those who are at ease with the contempt of the proud. I have to make things personal. I have to apply it. Because when I point one finger, I'm pointing three backwards. Yeah. So let's go to 124, my brother. Just a little arrow. There you go. <laughs> I can stop at one, two, three, four, five, the sixth word, and everything is good. Amen. If it had not been the Lord. Yes, Lord. Amen. If it had not been, been the Lord, Lord Amen. on Amen. my Amen. side, let Israel now say, <laughs> if it had not been the Lord who was on my side, when man was up against us, then Amen. they would have swallowed me alive. When their wrath was kindled against me, then the waters would have overwhelmed me, the stream would have gone over our soul, and the swell of waters would have gone over our soul. Blessed be the Lord who has not given us his praise to our sheep. Our soul has escaped as a bird from the snare of the fowlers. The snare is broken. I have escaped. My help is in the name of the Lord. Who made, made heaven, heaven and, and earth. earth. We're going to go to Psalm 125, brother. If you scroll down just a smidge. Uh, up, I guess. Go, go, go. The Lord, the strength of his, of his people. When you're down, when you're out, when you're beat up, and you got nothing more to give, withholding nothing, the strength of the Lord. Those who trust in the Lord are like Mount Zion, which cannot be moved, but abides forever. As the mountains surround Jerusalem, so the Lord surrounds his people from this time forth and forever. Hold up. I should have looked it up. There's a verse in scripture, it's address, I can't remember, but it says the Lord goes before us, right? Yes. He goes beside us, yes. right? And he pulls up the rear. Yep. Amen. He's got our six. He goes before me. He goes beside me. And he pulls up the rear. Who else does that? <laughs> I mean, literally, who else will go in front of me and at the same time be beside me and at the same time has got my back? And in that, I trust. For the scepter of wickedness shall not rest on the land allotted to the righteous. Let the righteous reach out their hands to iniquity. Do, o, do good, O Lord, to those who are good, and to those who are upright in their hearts. As for such as turn aside to their crooked ways, the short Lord shall lead them away with the workers of iniquity. Peace be on to Israel. Amen. And then 127, brethren, will be done. <coughs> Excuse me, I've been battling laryngitis, which some people have been really happy about. <laughs> Not us. But I can text really good. <laughs> Laboring and prospering with the Lord. Laboring and prospering with the Lord. Unless the Lord builds the house, they labor in vain. Unless the Lord guards the city, 
the watchman stays awake in vain. It is vain for you to rise up early, to sit up late, to eat the bread of sorrows, for he has given his beloved sheep. Behold, behold, children are a heritage from the Lord. The fruit of the womb is a reward. Like arrows in the hand of a warrior, so are the children of one's youth. Happy is the man who has his quiver full of them. They shall not be ashamed, but shall speak with their enemies in the gates. Praise God. Hallelujah. So we have our sister Pauline with us. Tell me your last name. Henny. Henny. There it is, right there. Pauline Henny. Bill's going to hook her up with sound here. She's got a wonderful testimony to share with us. A few little scripture verses, and then she's got a cute little website uh, and a video. So we're all going to. Sister. Let's trust Dad and go for it. All right. All right. <laughs> Thank it's you. all up to you. Can I get this put together? Here, yeah, let's just move There's one right there. <laughs> this one doesn't fall apart. Okay. Great. Yeah, take the one that's Stephanie's holding not something. This one apart all right. Okay. Uh, let's see. Well, thanks a lot for coming, you guys. It's so good to see all your faces. Um, I really appreciate being able to give my testimony because it's by our testimony and the blood of the Lamb that we overcome, right? Yeah. Amen. Amen. Um, let me start with a poem I wrote about, about this whole experience. It's called Overcoming Evil Agendas. Can you hear me okay? Not mm -hmm. too well. Okay. Let, me, let me turn it up. Let Is there a get the light well, my throat's still a little compromised, but it's getting better. One arm You're getting mixed. Okay, try that. Hello? That's better, right? That's better. Okay, good. All right. Um, <clears throat> when dark days reigned and evil seen, there came a plague that was keen to kill the young and old alike and those in between. Never before was there such a thing created by a man who thought himself king who negated all laws to perpetuate flaws in order to implement strangling iron claws. As did many, I too succumbed to that iron thumb, meant to press upon my lungs the very breath of God expunged, and the balance our lives did hum. And yet did God not say, your years outnumber that of today. And so with strength sourced from heaven still, arising with prayers so many filled, a bowl so full that it did spill, miracles of mercy and grace, even upon one so abased, not one drop did go to waste as each obstacle was fiercely faced. Amen. Overcoming, as it were, by the blood of the Lamb and the testimony of our word, we crush the enemy under our feet Amen. as we refuse to accept defeat. Amen. I implore thee not to faint amidst continual attempts to taint the truth from the lips of the saints. Instead, fight like Deborah and Jael, who cleverly went up in for the kill. As the enemy was lulled to sleep, the final blow was complete. Sojourn on until the day when the angels in heaven say, Good job, well done, faithful ones. Amen. 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 Thank you, Jesus. So, um, I'm going to share a little bit about what I went through with this whole COVID thing. And then, um, just like the result, you know, the good things that have come from it. And then also what God has been teaching me through this whole thing. So, um, Hopefully it won't be too teachy, you know what I mean? <laughs> but I just want to share with you some things that I feel like God's downloading to me. So anyway, um, um, Tim and I both got COVID in August, like the middle of August. And my, Tim's my husband. And um, he got better, but I got worse. And I got put in the hospital after about four days of having it. And um, I guess my pulse, pulse ox levels or my oxygen levels were low because they were like, they got me in right away, got me on oxygen right away. And then I was a couple days in the regular hospital. Then they pushed me over to ICU after two days. And just, it was just, I was just constantly 
having to do different things to try to get my pulse ox levels up. Pulse ox is oxygen. Um, so, you know, I remember seeing the doctor <laughs> for the day and he's like, I could tell. He was like looking at me like, you're not going to make it. And I'm thinking to myself, oh, oh yes, I am going to make it. Amen. Glory to God. <laughs> I, am I never thought for one minute that this was, that it was the end. Praise um, God. Well, now let me go back a little bit because prior, I'm, God gives me dreams and that's usually the way he speaks to me. So prior to me getting sick, um, I had I had a couple of dreams and they told me, one was an angel who said, you're going to live to be about 95. And another one was my sister telling me, you're going to live really long because my husband and I are going to live long. Amen. And Amen. so I, I held on to those. I just felt like that was God telling Amen. me that. Amen. And at the time I had the dreams, I was like, why is God telling me that? No idea. But then looking back after I got out of the hospital, got, got some brain, <laughs> brain, got some of my brains back. Um, I was like, you know, it's odd that, God, that I didn't get a dream about a warning of it. Because usually God gives me warning dreams when something's bad coming up. And so I looked back and I said, darn it, he didn't. And I didn't, I didn't pay attention to him, you know. Okay. So, um, you know, <laughs> dreams are so important because I feel like if I had possibly noticed it, recognized it, you know, I could have prayed with people to, you know, maybe not stop it totally, but maybe not make it as bad as it was. Yeah. I really want to get a community of dreamers and, and uh, Fighters. vision people <laughs> to, to get together so we can talk about our dreams and, you know, pray into each other's dreams because I think it's just so important. Anyway, that's just one of my things that I kind of want to do. Um, so anyway, you know, that was 20, 2021, just last year, and everybody knew by then, like, the things to do to stay healthy, get on HCQ, so I got on hydroxychloroquine. I was doing everything they told me to do, you know, it's just kind of, I didn't think I was going to get sick. Um, but I heard all the bad things about going into the hospital and getting a ventilator put on. Um, and so I didn't want that to happen, but that's exactly what happened. Mm -hmm. I got put on the incubator, um, not incubator. I got intubated, <laughs> which is a ventilator. <laughs> anyway, um, so they they sedate you before they put you on that degree where they put you on the ventilator. They have to sedate you because it's just... So I hear it's just so awful. Like there's no, nobody would just say, "Oh, okay." You know, it's just so. Like they strap you down, like they tie you down. Jesus. It's it's. Tim said it's pretty um, horrific, really, what they do to you. But um, but there wasn't anything else to be done at that point. My oxygen levels were getting lower and lower, and I wasn't. And they were giving me oxygen, you know, with the mask, but I wasn't. Um, oxygenating and that happened so this is the first miracle first miracle happened when they first tried to in intubate me put the ventilator in um, I wasn't oxygenating which means that the ventilator wasn't doing any good so I was probably I mean I don't know what level I was at but the nurse said you need to pray for a miracle and then you know, looking to get in palliative care for Pauline because she'll probably be brain dead or she'll probably be dead if she, if she makes it. Because it lasted like a whole hour. So, so like an hour I wasn't oxygenating. Wow. So, um, but for some reason, that, then it started working. Then the, my pulse ox levels went up. Um, the second miracle was when they did try to put the thing down my throat, they cut my tongue. Jesus. Apparently I was like fighting, fighting them. Yeah. And, um, you know, cause I, cause they told me, you know, cause I've heard like, don't get the ventilator. You won't come off the ventilator. Once you get put on that ventilator, you won't come off. 
But you know what? God is so much bigger. I'm Amen. sorry. Like, don't. Amen. And I, this is one thing I did not like. Don't ever listen. I mean, you can listen to, you know, yes, we need to all be wise about things that we do. But God's bigger Amen. than a hospital. God's bigger than, than a leader. God's bigger than that, you know? Amen. And if it's not my time and he wants me to live, he'll let me live. Amen. So anyway, I think I would have been... I think I, sh I would have been calmer about the whole thing. You know what I mean? If I wasn't so like, oh, God, <laughs> they're going to kill me. <laughs> I really thought they were <laughs> trying to kill me. Anyway, um, but, you know, they were really doing the best they could. Those, the nurses and the doctors, I really felt like they didn't want me to die. They were really doing everything they could to keep me alive. So glory to God, like you hear so many terrible stories out of that hospitals, but that was not my experience. My experience was these people, they were doing everything they could to keep me alive. And I, I'm assuming everybody else in the hospital. It was crazy because it was very, um, COVID was, they had to move a whole floor of patients just for COVID because there were so many of us. Um, Tim and I were going to a church on 44th called Denver Bible Church. And that pastor, his name is, was Bob, Bob Lanyard. Tim and I think we got COVID there because that pastor unfortunately didn't make it. He oh. passed away. He was in the same hospital that I was in. I didn't know it at the time, and he passed away, and he didn't make it. So um, he was the man who had um, was filing papers against all the COVID lockdowns against yes. the churches yes. in Colorado, and it's just interesting how he seem to have gotten targeted. I don't know how, I mean, I don't even have any evidence of that, but it's just interesting that that happened, that he got it so badly and he passed away. Um, and now his church is out of, is totally quit, not there anymore. So um, there's some things that, you know, I guess we'll find out when we get to heaven, what happened with all of that. Okay, so back to me being in the hospital. So then my tongue, yeah, my tongue, he, Tim said it got cut in half and it turned black because it got infected. And um, it's a miracle that I, that I still have my tongue. There's a few pieces missing. So it's a little, sometimes a little difficult to talk. But um, it didn't, it, it, it just got better. Tim says within two days it was better. I was like, and that's like, you know, that I think mean, that's a miracle. Um, at one point, Tim told me I was, you know, I don't know if it was during the sedation or in, before the sedation, but he said, I was laying, I was sleeping, I was sound asleep. I sat straight up in bed and I said, Satan, you're going to pay for this. You're going to get back a hundredfold of what yes. I lost. Yes. And then yes. I went right back to sleep. Praise <laughs> God. So my spirit man was, it was, I'm telling you, my spirit man was fighting. Amen. It was fighting. Because I remember what was going on during the sedation thing. And it was a, it was a total nightmare. And I just felt like the enemy was just totally after me. Um, and I also remember thinking, after they had taken me on and off the ventilator several times, I and this is while I was sedated, I remember my, must have been my spirit man saying this, it said, I could just go home and be with Jesus. And, and then I said, or I can choose to stay here. And I thought, no, I'm not ready to go yet. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Which is the craziest thing. But I just at that moment, I had the most incredible understanding of the great gift that we are given from life. It is such, it is such a gift. I can't even, you know, it makes me cry just to think about what the Lord has given us in this life. And, um, and, you know, when I came out, when I came out of, sorry, I'm kind of, when I came out of it, 
And I was so, I couldn't do anything. Like I couldn't talk, I couldn't eat, I couldn't walk, I couldn't do, I couldn't do anything. And it made me really appreciate all the other things I could do when, when I was healthy. And I remember thinking, oh my gosh, every little thing that you can do is such a gift from God. Mm -hmm. Like just getting up in the morning mm -hmm. and having a cup of coffee. Yes. It's yes. such a gift from God. Yes. I mean, that's one thing the Lord has really given me from this. I just am so much happier because everything's just like, ooh, you know, here I am, I'm alive. Amen. I don't know how to explain it, but it's just Amen. amazing. Anyway, okay. So, um, so the second miracle was the tongue. And then the third miracle was... Um, just the fact that I wasn't I wasn't getting better really. <laughs> like so they had learned to, to take people off the ventilator and then see how they're doing. Don't keep them on the whole time because they realize that's why people never came off of them. Because you need to give your lungs a chance to start to breathe on your own. And unless you do that, um, it's impossible. If you keep somebody on a ventilator for two or three weeks, it's impossible to get them off. So they did learn that from the earlier, you know, from all that stuff that they did earlier in COVID. Um, so anyway, um, the doctors kept telling Tim, she's only got 20% chance of living. She's not, and then a couple of times they were like, there's nothing else we can do for her. You know, we'll just keep her comfortable. And that's really all we can do for her. So Tim, Tim was pretty desperate and, um, he, where is that? Um, he, he said he went down to the chapel and he prayed this whole book. And then he came back into the room and he prayed it out loud over me. And it's called Prayers That Rout Demons and Break Curses. Mm -hmm. And he, he said once he prayed this, I started to my I, I started to get better. So I think somehow I got a curse put on me. I don't know how, but. Um, and there were so many people praying for me. I mean, my sister, who's a strong Christian, she lives on the East Coast. She got 200 people, at least 200 people, all up and down the East Coast. Amen. The main, the Florida, Amen. praying for me. I know that I was put on the prayer um, list at um, uh, the Mount Zion Church. Um, just, there were so many. People told me afterwards they were praying for me. Who I didn't even think they believed in God, Amen. you know. So I, it was just so. It really blessed me that so many people were praying for me, and I think that's um, one of the things. I know that's one of the things that saved my life. Um. So, so finally, I start coming to, and they start to wean me off the sedation gradually. Um, and I had no idea what happened to me. Like one day they were like, <laughs> you know, one day I couldn't breathe and then the next day I'm waking up and I can't move. And I said to Tim, did I have a stroke? He's like, no, you didn't have a stroke. I didn't say it, I must have written it down because I couldn't talk because they put a trach in me. Jesus. And it was so big. Jesus. They had to get it big enough because there was so much stuff coming out of my lungs. They didn't want me to choke. So it um, it pressed on my larynx, so I couldn't talk. So um, and I couldn't, I couldn't, I couldn't move because I had been. It was three and a half weeks that I was sedated. By then, your your body just atrophies so quickly. So um, I said, Tim, did I have a stroke? And he's like, No. I'm like, Well, what happened? I don't understand what happened to me. I still didn't understand. I didn't understand why I couldn't talk. I didn't understand why they had me on a feeding tube. I didn't understand anything. So, um, but um, after like a couple of days of coming out of it, people started saying, you're a rock star. And I'm like, what do you mean I'm a rock star? I'm not a rock star. I can't even move. <laughs> I don't feel like a rock star. And they were like, and they never explained it, but I think it. I think they were like, "We can't believe you're alive!" <laughs> like, Praise like, God! Like, this is amazing that you can. Praise like, God! You can, you know, you have 
some you have your faculties, you know what's going on. Um, Praise God. And, and I did get quick. I did get better really quick. I couldn't. They had. I was at an ICU within like a week of being just, you know, because I remember one nurse told me she goes, if you sit in that chair. They had a chair there. That's going to be so much better for you than laying in that bed. Yes. Because there's nothing else I could, I couldn't move. So I said, every morning, I can't move the chair. Right now, I want to get in the chair. Here's the notebook that I use to write everything in. Because I had, and I, Tim, I said, Tim, I keep losing the pen. Could you please attach the pen to the notebook? And he did. You know, bless his heart. He was so good. He came every day to the hospital. Bless his heart. Oh my gosh, he was so attentive, and he was, and he knew exactly what to look for in the numbers. Um, one time, he said he felt pressed upon to get to the hospital early, so he gets there at like six a.m. and he comes in, and um, my numbers are at sixty. My pulse ox is at 60, which is supposed to be at 90, so 60 is pretty low. And he looks at the nurse, and the nurse is like on her phone. And she goes, and she saw Tim, and she just took a beeline into my room and did something to get my numbers up. But things like that, I felt like the Holy Spirit prompted Tim to do that. Yes. Um, um, yeah, he was amazing. But one thing I did as I'm getting better, um, you know, I'm asking the Lord, Lord, where are you? Like, I don't feel you. I People told me that I prayed for you that you wouldn't have an encounter with Jesus while you were under. I didn't. I just had nightmares. And I was like, God, where are you? Where are you? I don't feel you. What's going on, you know? And um, so I pulled the phone up on my pulled the Bible up on my phone and um, you know I can but in that state you have so much brain fog and you just can't see very well because the, <laughs> the words are really small but one one line pop, popped out at me um, and it was um, oh, I, have it I can't believe my mind just went blank oh yeah Mark 6, where Jesus got in the boat. Jesus got in, I just read that. Jesus got in the boat and the storm and calmed the storm. And I just started crying. I was like, oh my gosh, God, you got in that boat with those God, with the, your disciples. You're so compassionate because he, he could have just walked by, but he didn't. So I felt like God was saying, don't worry, Pony, I'm in the boat with you. It's okay. Um, and I'm going to calm this storm too. So maybe if we could go there, because I'd like to read that. Because when I got out of the hospital, um, he told me to, um, I really thought the Lord said to read, not the whole chapter, but read what went on around that. So I don't know, you probably know this, these verses, but before this, this is when Jesus and the disciples fed the 5,000. And um, so, but we can read from like um, 45. So after they fed the 5,000, Jesus told the disciples to get in the boat and go to Bethesda. And then he sent, sent the multitudes away, so I'm on 45. Okay, so he, um, so then he went to the mountain to pray. Now when evening came, the boat was in the middle of the sea, and, he, and Jesus was alone on the land. Then he saw them straining at rowing, for the wind was against them. Oh, sorry. Now about the fourth watch of the night, he came to them walking on the sea. So he waited from like, whenever they got in the boat, we'll say like nine o'clock at night, right? And Jesus could see them <laughs> struggling, rowing and struggling till four in the morning. And he, but he's on the hill praying. And I think he, and I'm sure he was praying for them. And I, and then it, it really, 
I was really impressed that Jesus was praying for me yes. that whole time yes. too. And he was waking people up in the middle of the night to yes. pray for me too. Because yes. people told me, I, God woke me up in the middle of the night. Stephanie told me, God woke me up at 3 o'clock in, in the night to pray for you, Tommy. Yes. So he is in constant intercession for us. Jesus is constantly interceding for us. I mean, I never really thought about that, but he is. Yeah. And his... And his desire is for us to to know that he is good and to know who we are as sons of God. Because, um, okay, so it says, He came to them walking on the sea, and he would have passed them by. Like, <laughs> why? And when they saw him walking on the sea, they supposed it was a ghost. So they so they were really scared by him being there. But they all saw him and were troubled. And, um, you know, people sometimes, when, and this is kind of a side note, but sometimes when people tell, say, yeah, I have dreams, but I don't want to tell you because it's, you know, it's kind of weird and it's kind of scared me. And I'm like, so it can't be from God. You know, I'm thinking to myself, God scares the disciples he scares us in dreams sometimes to get our attention you know what i'm saying so that's not a good excuse not to know hey, man. dreams are important <laughs> anyway um so he said immediately be of good cheer don't be afraid i'm here and then he got in the boat and the wind ceased they were greatly amazed in themselves beyond measure and marveled for they had not understood about the loaves because their heart was hardened so they hadn't understood about the okay. miracle of the loaves and they didn't understand about the storm because and this really doesn't have anything to do with but i really but this is one thing that god's starting to really show me like he really wants us to do what he did did Amen. And, Amen. Yes. and he's like look I wanted you to feed the 5,000 because you can feed the 5,000. Yes. I wanted you to calm the storm because you can calm the storm because anything that I can do, you can do, and Amen. maybe better. Amen. So anyway. Um, thank you, Lord. Yeah, thank you, Jesus. So anyway, that's just been something that he's really been pressing upon me, um, how, you know, our thoughts can really hinder what God wants to do. You know, if we think we're not up to it, or it has nothing to do with that. It's all about what Jesus did. It has nothing to do with us at all, really, other than just receiving and believing that He is who He said He is, and He and we are who we, He says we are. Anyway, okay. So from the ICU, I got put into a rehab place. And it was my last day to go home from the rehab place, okay? And they said, oh, we're going to get you out of here early. We know you're excited you know, excited to get home. We'll have you out here by 9 o'clock. Well, 9 o'clock comes and 10 o'clock comes and 11 o'clock comes. And I'm still, like, twiddling my thumbs. So what's going on? I keep asking the nurse every time she comes in. I don't know. I don't know. Let me go check it out. So Tim's like, I can't wait anymore. I'm just going to go walk around a bit. So, so, you know, God is so amazing the way he orchestrates things and timing so when we think you know there's something else going on when we think we're like oh this is terrible it's probably because there's something else going on and there was so tim met a gentleman in the parking lot who had a son in, in the hospital who this is an even worse story so they were from grand junction the, the son is in the hospital. He's about, he's young. He's like 40. He's not doing well. Um, his wife came up from Grand Junction. And the stress of being a caretaker. They couldn't get a hold of her one day. She was staying in a hospital, in a hotel. And um, she had passed away in the hotel. And so... The, so Tim got to pray with this man and encourage him. And um, I know it's not a huge big deal, but to me, it was. I feel, felt like it was like a, a divine appointment for that man, that family. Yes, and, it was. Um, 
And as soon as as soon as he was done that, he came back to the room and they let me go. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so that was thank you, Lord. You know, that was good. Thank you, Lord. <laughs> thank you, Jesus. Um, so as it says in Romans eight twenty eight, all things work together for our good. And um, and maybe we could pull that one up. And we know that all things work together for good, for those who love God, to those who are the called according to his purpose. For whom he foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his son. Amen. 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 That Amen. he might be the first one born among many brethren. Moreover, whom he predestined, these he also called. Whom he called, these he also justified. Yes. And whom he justified, these he also glorified. Yes. So again, he's showing us that Jesus is our brother and that he's predestined us to be conformed to the image of his son. Yes. I mean, yes. that just blows me away. Yes. I just, yeah. I can't, some, I can't wrap my head around it, but it's not a head knowledge. I guess it's more of a heart and a spirit knowledge. Um, so that's one thing that kind of ties in with the other thing um, that I read from Mark 6 about what he wants us to do and how he wants us to see ourselves. And then um, just a couple, uh, uh, some other ways that God is has made good of this. He's really restored to my marriage. Um, we have a blended family, just life, you know, just life. We've been married for over 20 years, but still, it's it's been a lot of struggle but um he just he just told me to start our marriage and it's just amazing i mean i can't, I can't even Praise tell you how good it is <laughs> thank you jesus <laughs> thank you jesus <laughs> um <laughs> so um and i also feel like he's changed my dna like <laughs> I just laugh so much easier now, which is really nice. Yeah. And um, I don't get so upset about stupid little things, you know. Things that you thought are so important are just like, oh, who cares, you know. <laughs> it's like, it just doesn't matter. It's like, I don't know. It's really good. It's a really good place to be in. I don't want to. I don't ever want to go back to the way I was because I was Amen. too serious Amen. and too, like, I don't know, just too. And um, life's a lot more fun now. Um, so praise the Lord. I think that's all I have to say, really. Um, oh, this video. <laughs> so just to wrap it up, I have a short little video that, um, and I want to tell you how 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 I came upon this video. Um, okay, so this ties in with God wanting us to understand who we are as sons Amen. of God, and. Um, I, I was here last week with Ad, you know, and Adam, he interpreted my dream about, and in the dream was um, Trump, The Trump was the father, yes. the father of yes. in my dream. And I, mean, I kind of knew that, just interpreting my own dreams, but it really hit home. And I was just like, oh my gosh, Lord, you are really my father. Yeah, you are like I'm really your daughter. Like I'm really your son. Yes. I'm really a child yes. of God. So then, like a day later, this comes up and it hit my spirit just like, boom, and I just started sobbing. It just brought it. It just brought it all together. So I have to share with you. So anyway, this is from uh, Chris Blackman. literally our father Hang he on. literally fathered you in the same way jesus was born into this earth the word eternal was born into this world you were born again in the exact same way when god created the world his spirit hovered over the waters and he sent his seed his word and create yeah. when Jesus came to earth <laughs> the Holy Spirit hovered over Mary's waters sent his seed 
through the world's exact same way and create it. Before this moment, the only presence of God was in the eye. <laughs> but now Mary was the Ark of the Covenant. Her womb was the Ark of the Covenant. God literally Father Jesus sent his word to create the word and Jesus is born on the earth when you receive Christ his word the word there is the Holy Spirit hovers over you otherwise you wouldn't receive it. it's by grace it's all his power into you and you are born again from above the same way Jesus was born from above it's so when Jesus said, Father, Abba, Daddy, to God, he wasn't bringing in some new theological construct or new covenant or relationship per se. He was talking to his Father. He says, Father, that's the only person who is his Father. He was talking to his Father. That now it's the same as you. Because you're no longer humans. You're no longer humans. You've gone beyond human yes. for something else. Yes. You are exactly what he is because you're recreated the same way he was created. And Jesus was fully God, fully man. So what are you? When Christ entered your body, did his divinity decrease in any way? No. Fully God. Did you leave being the human race? No. But you're a new kind. First Adam was of the earth, earthly, born of the earth. The second Adam was born from above, heaven. You are now born from above, the exact same way Christ is born from above. And now you are exactly what He is. It says you're born of the same seed. What are two children born of the same seed called? Twins. twins. Identical twins. Now you are Jesus' identical twin. Except that metaphor doesn't work because identical twins are separate beings. You're one being with Christ. One being. If any man be in Christ, any person be in Christ, is one spirit with the Lord. I'm one spirit with Yahweh, who's my Father, through Christ His Son. Yahweh is our Father. He is literally our Father. Amen. Glory to God. Glory to God. So thank you. Thank you, Father. Thank you so much. For everything you've done for me. And that you do for us all the time, every single minute of the day. You are such a good father. And we give you all praise and glory. You help us to walk out the ministry that you've given us through Christ. So that others can know you too, Lord. I just thank you for this time. I like ask that you bless everyone here. And bless them as they go in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Yes. Thank you, Lord. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Thank you, Jesus. So are you holding anything back? <laughs> With holding nothing. With holding nothing. So thank you, sister, for sharing. Thank you for closing the service. I appreciate it. Um, I have a few quick announcements. Um, unfortunately, our food bank is closed right now. Uh, if you want something from the bookstore, Bill will help you. You can go get it, bring it back. We've got their card reader here. Uh, we are taking up a love offering. It's in the back. The Lord bless you. The Lord keep you. May his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. Mm -hmm.
<laughs> Go forth and sin no more. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, thank, you. No, thank you for letting me speak. I really, it blesses me. It's fun that you don't let anything bother you anymore, that you're having more fun. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, it really puts life in the perspective. Yeah, it does. 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 But I like to walk around. Well, it really is a it really is a gift. Oh, I think it really is a gift to be. Yeah. Did you get any spiritual?